Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. I'm coming to you from Joe Fest in Augusta, Georgia. It, there's a hustle and a bustle here as everybody gets set up. We're about to start Joe Fest and we are about to start Cobra Convergence. It's time for the first HCC 788 review of Cobra Convergence 6 and we are starting with Scrap Iron. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. And this is Cobra Convergence 6. Welcome to the month of Cobra. You have already seen Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse, the Full Force Podcast, and Joe Motion Videos 82. And now it is my turn and we are starting with a review of Scrap Iron. Scrap Iron is kind of a forgotten figure. He's a figure that should be talked about more, but it often isn't. Uh, it was a pretty standout figure in 1984, but 1984 was a year of standout figures, so Scrap Iron kind of gets lost in the mix, but we are going to look at him this week, and we'll even get some opinions of some G.I. Joe fans about Scrap Iron. Without further ado, let's get started with Cobra Convergence 6, HCC 788 presents Scrap Iron. This is Scrap Iron, the Cobra Anti-Armor Specialist from 1984. This figure was introduced in 1984. It was also available in 1985. It was discontinued for 1986. This is the only version of Scrap Iron in the vintage era. Scrap Iron was designed by Ron Rudat for Hasbro. Anti-Armor means he takes out tanks. Scrap Iron is a Cobra agent, according to the file card and the Cobra emblem on the figure but the file card also indicates he works for Destro. Destro was the enemy weapons supplier introduced in 1983. Some of the parts for Scrap Iron were originally planned for a Cobra Alpine Trooper that was cancelled before production. Early concept drawings also had him designated as an anti-aircraft trooper. The final production figure shares parts with several other figures. We will discuss that more later. Destro has always been an independent operator, but he has mostly worked for for Cobra. In 1988, Destro version 2 was released, and he was the leader of his own army, the Iron Grenadiers. Why wasn't Scrap Iron an Iron Grenadier? He worked for Destro, and he would have fit right in. Instead, the Iron Grenadiers got another anti-tank specialist, Metalhead. He fit the exact same role Scrap Iron had. I don't know why a new character was needed when it would have been a perfect opportunity to update Scrap Iron. Let's take a look at Scrap Iron's accessories accessories and let's start with his pistol. The card contents call this an RAR pistol. It is in black plastic. It's not exactly based on a real world weapon, but it looks similar to the PM63 RAK, a Polish submachine gun. This is a unique accessory and pretty generous considering the large missile system that he came with. Now let's look at that missile system. The card contents call this a missile system with remote activator. It is a five piece set or six pieces if you count the control wire or eight pieces if you count the two missiles. The control wire is made of soft, flexible black plastic. It has a trigger piece, a long wire, and the end plugs into a hole on the top of the missile box. There's a very slight variant on these control wires. Some of them have thinner handles to place in the figure's hand. The missile box is in black plastic. It is well detailed with some technical detail and it even has some vents cut into the side. It is attached to a stand on the bottom and this stand is three pieces. The stand consists of two leg pieces, one and two. There's a larger one and a smaller one and then there's a central mount that plugs into the bottom of the missile box. Finally, we get to the missiles. It fits two missiles. They are red, which is a nice sharp contrast to the black missile box. Given Scrap Iron specialty, these would be anti-tank missiles, probably with some kind of guidance system. These missiles are made of a soft, flexible plastic, and these missiles were partially reused in 1985 for the Cobra Ferret. These weird two-way Cobra Ferret missiles used the tip 
clip of Scrap Iron's missile. This missile system is amazing. It's very large to come with a single carded figure, and it has a lot of parts. Uh, it's very elaborate, and it's not something you would expect to come with just a regular figure from 1984. You would expect something like this to come with a small playset, but here it comes with Scrap Iron, and he is ready to take out G.I. Joe Mobats. Let's take a look at Scrap Iron's articulation. He had the articulation that was standard for a G.I. Joe figure in 1984, meaning he could turn his head from left to right. He could not look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow, so he could bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep, so he could swivel his arm all the way around. This was an O-ring figure, meaning the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Scrap Iron. And just mentioning his color first, he looks like a Cobra character, doesn't he? With the blue and the red and the black. Even if he didn't have the Cobra on his arm, you would look at this guy and say Cobra. Looking at Scrap Iron's head, he has a black non-removable helmet with a Cobra head in the center and black goggles. It covers most of his face is slightly oversized. There's a reason for that. We'll get to that in a moment. His face is Caucasian with a scar on his right cheek. In 1960s G.I. Joe, all the figures had scars on the face. In 1980s G.I. Joe, the bad guys tended to have scars. This head was sculpted by Kirk Hindman for Hasbro. The helmet was originally supposed to be removable, but Steve Schwartz, Hasbro's VP of Marketing, objected to a Cobra character with an exposed face. So the helmet was glued on on before the final production mold was made. That's why the helmet looks so oversized. It was originally going to be removable. On the chest, he has a red undershirt and a blue shirt. He has a red tactical vest over that with straps that go over the shoulders and buckles on those straps. On the vest, he has some black grenades on the left side and a black pouch on the right side. His arms feature long blue sleeves. He has a red cobra emblem on the right upper arm. He has black four arm pads and black gloves. These arms were originally used on 1983 Airborne. The arms are just recolored and that recoloring is rather dramatic. It's not easy to identify these as Airborne's arms. On his waist he has a blue uniform and a red belt and black pouches on that belt. He has this red lining that goes around his legs that I guess is supposed to be some kind of harness. His legs are blue. He has a red pistol and holster on the right leg and a red strap that goes around the right leg. He has four black spikes on the left leg. I always assumed these spikes were like anchor spikes for the missile system. On his lower legs he has black knee pads and those knee pads extend above the knee. I do like those. And he has red combat boots. These lower legs are another reuse of parts. It's the same lower legs from Airborne again. These legs saw some later use. Some variants of the 1980s mail away figure Steel Brigade used both the upper and lower legs from Scrap Iron. Other variants of Steel Brigade only used the lower legs of Scrap Iron. And finally, the lower legs were used on the infamous Steel Brigade version 2, the Goldhead Steel Brigade. Despite reusing a lot of parts, this figure looks unique. The color change makes a huge difference. If you weren't told these parts came from Airborne, you may not have noticed. The colors also work well for a Cobra agent. Red, blue, and black are very Cobra-like, but what about the Iron Grenadiers? Their colors are black, red, and gold. Scrap Iron could have easily been adapted to that color scheme. Now let's take a look at Scrap Iron's file card. His file card has his faction as Cobra. It has a portrait of Scrap Iron here. He is the Cobra Anti-Armor Specialist, codenamed Scrap Iron. His final name is Classified. His primary military specialty is Tank Destroyer. His birthplace is also classified. This paragraph says, it is believed that Scrap Iron is a product designer for Destro's Armaments Company. Destro's Armaments Company is called Mars, as introduced on Destro's file card. Carries out initial field testing on all new armor-piercing munitions and submunitions. Area of specialization is remote-launched, laser-guided, rocket-propelled, piezoelectric fused anti-tank weapons. Piezoelectric is electricity produced from applied mechanical pressure on certain reactive materials. These weapons are categorized 
categorized beyond the smart stage and are known by the nomenclature brilliant. Brilliant means after only five years of playing football, that missile got a college degree. There is an asterisk after brilliant. The footnote says current state-of-the-art mill tech terminology. This bottom paragraph has a quote. It says, Scrap Iron is methodical and precise. Imperfection in any form repels him. Perhaps that's why he wants to blow up the world. Looking at how Scrap Iron was used in G.I. Joe Media, in the animated series he first appeared in Revenge of Cobra Part 1, but he was barely on screen and had no lines. In Arise Serpentor Arise, he is seen assembling Cobra bats. When there is a rift within Cobra, Scrap Iron sides with Cobra Commander. Scrap Iron's loyalty goes to the highest bidder, and he later switches sides and helps Dr. Mindbender. He is very rarely used in the animated series. He was little more than a background character. In the comic book series published by Marvel Comics, I flipped through my issues of the comics, and the first issue in which I find Scrap Iron is issue number 43, which is pretty late in the series for a 1984 character. Maybe he is in the background somewhere and I missed it. He was patrolling the secret Cobra town of Springfield with Firefly. In the comic book, Scrap Iron's missile system is shoulder-fired, not mounted on a stand. In that issue, he fires a missile and kills two side characters, the Softmaster and Candy. He also maims Billy, Cobra Commander's son. Scrap Iron was barely used in the comic book series. None of the cartoon or comic book writers seemed to like this guy. Looking at Scrap Iron overall, I really like this figure. I like the colors, I like the details, I like the scar on the face, I really like the weapon system. That's a huge set to be packaged with a single carded figure. The figure isn't perfect, the head is a little oversized, the red harness on the waist piece doesn't look quite right. He reuses a lot of parts, only about two-thirds of this figure is new. Nonetheless, the color change on those parts make a big difference. The arms and legs look unique even if they aren't. The missile launcher is the star of the show. It is huge, it is well detailed, it would make quick work of the G.I. Joe Mobat or Mauler. If this had been issued in the 90s, it definitely would have been a spring-firing missiles. The colors are perfect. The red and the black look sinister. You can tell this is a bad guy's weapon. Now let's see what some G.I. Joe fans have to say about Scrap Iron. Hi, I'm uh, Casey Wheeler with Podcast from the Pit. And we are talking Scrap Iron. Now, the V1 Scrap Iron is one of my favorites from back in the day. Loved his outfit, loved the accessories he came with, and reading the comics just knowing he was completely moralist and a psychopath, he uh, just adds that little extra that makes him a great Cobra. Hi, I'm Bob Miller. Um, so, Scrap Iron, I guess I'll talk about the toy. So I like the toy, I think it's a practical toy, and, you know, the, with the vest, you know, have, uh, he's an anti-armor trooper. So I think it's a very practical looking toy. It makes a lot of sense. I'm disappointed in the comics. They never kind of did his Destro ties, which kind of it mentions in the, in the file card that he has ties to Destro. He tests weapons for him. So I'm kind of disappointed they didn't play that up. Um, the one thing I, I didn't really like his accessory, um, his missile watcher. I, I thought they should give him RPG-7, a rocket propelled grenade. But that's actually what I have my scrap iron has RPG-7 because what they gave him isn't very portable. So I don't like his weapon. Uh, as far as the character himself, you know, he's uh, a scumbag, you know, <laughs> so he definitely violated Geneva 4, and, uh, which is the discrimination Geneva Convention, don't kill civilians, so uh, he definitely violated that and killed a bunch of people that he shouldn't have killed, but that's why he's a bad guy, I guess, so uh, I, I guess he's supposed to be a scumbag, so uh, those are my thoughts on Scrap Iron. <laughs> Hello, and I'm White Mike Vegeta, and... Uh, my opinion of Scrap Iron is he's a great figure. Um, I like his backstory a lot, knowing that he's part of Destro's um, Mars division. And as a kid, I loved him. I thought he was an awesome figure because he felt deluxe because he didn't come with just a gun. He had the, the missile rack, and that just took him up a notch over so many other figures that were so basic at the time. And I was so glad that 87, or not 87, 80, had such great figures as a whole just you could tell the budget went up because they were selling and they figures got more weapons more gear and it just felt like a, a really solid figure. Ed from Pittsburgh, Scrap Iron. 
very good looking figure. A little confusing in the background because it seems like he should have been an employee of Destro. I would have liked to have seen a refresh, if, even if it was just a repaint of him in Iron Grenadier colors. It went a different direction, I guess they came up with Metalhead. Maybe they lost the copyright, I don't know. Um, perhaps a missed opportunity. Let's say that. I definitely love the missile launcher though. I mean, come on. Look at the size, it's beautiful. Michael Layton at the Joe Fest. Just a few quick thoughts on Scrap Iron. Pretty underrated character. You gotta have a good tech guy that can build you some weapons to take out Joe Tanks. Have a good one. Cobra! That was my review of Scrap Iron. I hope you enjoyed it. We are wrapping up the first day of Joe Fest here and I'm headed for the After Hours facility. Uh, but I'll be back tomorrow and I'll be back all month for Joe Fest. Check hcc788.com for the full calendar of presenters. I do have that website, hcc788.com, and you can find me on the social medias on Facebook and Twitter. If you would like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos like like the names you see scrolling on your screen right now. I will see you all later for more Cobra Convergence. Tune in all month, and until then, remember only Cobra is Cobra.